you our extremely talented panel, our producers and stars. First, executive producer and director, Randall Einhorn. She plays Kristen Dorian Brown. She plays Ryan's neighbor and Wilfred's owner. Jenna, please welcome Fiona Goopman. He co-created the original version of Wilfred. He's an executive producer, a writer, and stars as the title character, ladies and gentlemen, Jason Gann. He stars as Ryan. Please welcome Elijah Wood. Our executive producer, who has worked on such great shows as American Dad, Family Guy, he adapted Wilfred for American television. It's my pleasure to introduce David Zuckerman. Outstanding moderator today. He is the former TV critic of the New York Star Ledger. He's the senior editor and TV crit critic for Hit Fix. You can follow him on Twitter at Seppenwall. Please welcome Alan Seppenwall. So, Elijah, I have to start with you. you, you, you. Yeah, you, you get this script, do you think, all right, now everything I ever wanted to accomplish as an actor is done? <laughs> In one fell swoop, yeah, and one fell swoop. <laughs> we, we all just watched the episode for the first time I did anyway. I've never seen that episode. And um, I think that's our crowning achievement. <laughs> I mean, it's got everything you want in a great comedy show, right? It's got jizz, it's got great dancing. Come on. Oh my god. Where, where are you right? And it's got a churro blowjob. Come on! That's what we bring you on our show. Where do you rank the accomplishments? You know, starring in an Oscar-winning Best Picture or being in a money shot? I mean... <laughs> yeah, totally. Oh. Uh, David, I, I have to ask, how did this episode come about? What was the original pitch? <laughs> uh, Is this thing on? Uh, that's personal experience. Is this on? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, actually, there, there was an interesting story about this where um, Somebody in our writer's room, who's probably in this room right now, but who remained nameless, was talking about how he had gone to a party one night, and as a gag, he, uh, just as a gag, he had picked up the dog uh, that was there and, and was pretending to jerk it off. And, not pretending, sorry. He was actually doing it. And, um, and uh, although I don't think he actually took the dog to completion, for the rest of the night, the dog was following him around completely obsessed. <laughs> and, um, and that was sort of where we started on this episode. Oh my god. Oh my god. Um, really... The dog apparently still remembers him. Like he sees him and he's like, yeah, you, you know. <laughs> but but in fact, to, to defend um, Reed, he, he didn't... Uh, he, he didn't do it at the end. It wasn't on the lipstick part. It was like just a shaft. <laughs> If you, ever, if you ever meet Reed, he's the uh, he's the funniest guy I've ever met. Um, you know, between him and his writing partner um, Eli, hilarious, hilarious guy. Are you here, Reed? Reed anything, stand up. anything. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, this guy. Could the dog masturbator please stand up? He'll do anything for a laugh. Can you get two more Reed, please? Including Master a Dog. <laughs> so how do you get from there then to Ryan and Wilford dancing? Well, I, I think um, there were, the idea of doing an, an episode about doggy dancing was sort of floating around also. This was a story that we had actually broken last year with a completely different theme. Um, it was about Wilford and Ryan spending too much time together. And that, that episode eventually became the one about the block party with Trash Face um, last season. So it, it changed a little bit. But um, it was one of the episodes at FX, not for the reasons you would think, 
had thought that we weren't quite ready to do. Um, so they asked us not to do it last year. Um, it had nothing to do with the, the, the money shot, which by the way, you will not see on the air. That is, that is the one thing that we were not allowed to do. So you, you got to see a shot that uh, only people on DVD, so you should feel very, very special. It will be a it will be a dry shot on, on when it airs, um, but uh, we, we just came up with the, the notion of the theme and the idea of uh, Ryan and Wilfred doing um, a big dance number at the end, and the and the story you know came together. And Jason did an amazing job on the script, and and uh, they worked these guys worked so hard on that dance. They they did that in between shooting scenes from other episodes. They worked with a choreographer. Um, they, they just busted their asses, and I have to say, and you can't tell by looking at it, or maybe you can't, they're not actually natural dancers. <laughs> they had to work a little bit. Um, but uh, they, they worked really hard on that, and, and the, the music uh, came together. It was, it was a really fun thing to do. And, and Randall, I mean, it looks, the, the final number looks very much like a classic movie musical kind of thing. How did you shoot that? Um, you know, I, we actually used, um, we, we shot, it's funny, I have one frame that I sent to one of the production people at FX. Uh, it's a shot, we shoot our, our, our show on stills cameras. Kind of like uh, these stills cameras down here, only not quite as high end. So we have, um, it's a photo I had of, of, of our stills cameras, a $3,000 stills camera with a, a lens I bought off of eBay for $500 on a $300,000 you know, crane to do those big sweeping shots. It's just, there's some great irony in that, I thought. It's just this tiny little camera on a giant crane. But um, <laughs> we worked together with a production designer, Michael Whetstone, to come up with how to move the walls and blow that whole place apart. And I think it looked really cool. A lot of fun. <laughs> now, uh, Elijah and Jason, I just want to hear a little bit from your perspective about doing the choreography for this. <laughs> Sorry. Um, how was that? It, it, well, it was challenging. We, we didn't have a lot of time. Um, uh, like David was saying, you know, we were shooting different episodes, sometimes in the same day, um, and to try and find the time, you know, that was a, what was it, like a three and a half minute dance sequence that we had to learn? And it, I remember the first time that we actually saw these, the dancers, our, our choreographers, lay it all out for us. It was so intimidating. Because <laughs> we, up until that point, we'd, we'd learned little bits and pieces for that dance montage that you see in the middle, and that was easier, because we could kind of bite off these little chunks but this whole long sequence was very intimidating, but we kind of just attacked it bit by bit. And it was the last thing that we shot um, in the whole season, and we were there till about 1 in the morning or 1.30 in the morning, and, uh, and it was kind of surreal because it was, um, the lights were on, and it looks like this Hollywood, you know, 1940s Hollywood set, and um, the music, it was like a real finale type thing, and it was like, this may be the last time we ever play these uh, roles, you know, like you, you live from week to week with ratings and stuff and it was a really, um, it was a special, a special time and it was like, wow, this is, um, this has been a fun journey. It was cool, it was cool to actually go out of the whole season with that scene. Yeah. It's such an explosive celebratory. <laughs> <laughs> you know that? Dirty minds. <laughs> But it, it, it's such a, you know, it's a celebratory sequence, and to kind of go out dancing um, was awesome. And it was a real great thing for the crew to experience, too, because it was literally our most, like, professional day on set. We had a technocrane. Like, <laughs> we felt like we were making something proper, with proper equipment. It was, it was pretty amazing. And then we had Del Taco that night, too. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Del Taco? It was, that was not our finest moment. That was a dream. <laughs> uh, I want to ask Dorian and Fiona a, a sequel to a question I asked at last year's panel in terms of, of working with Jason and not reacting to him as a person and, and treating him as a dog. Now that you've done two seasons of this, do you feel like you've gotten it down or there's still times every now and then when you find yourself kind of breaking and reacting to what he's actually doing? Yeah. Jason is one of the funniest people I know, and you never know what's going to come out of his mouth. So um, definitely there will be times when we'll be interacting where that will crack me up. But in terms of like being in the moment, it's still the same approach, just trying to keep it as truthful as possible and treat him like he's my one of my own pets. I actually did have uh, a couple scenes. <laughs> like, 
that we had, <laughs> I had a scene, tonight's episode, we get to interact, and that was fun, but I did have a hard time uh, not noticing <laughs> Jason and not looking at him like a human being, because I guess we realized we had never really done that. We hadn't done much together no. until this year, and we realized, oh, this is like, um, this is un unusual, and um, yeah, it's good. I, I think that, um, I think that Wilfred and the Kristen character, um, we were talking about this before, should, should interact more. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her, she's gorgeous. <laughs> and, Jason, with the kid. and Jason, do you ever feel like Mr. Viss and deliberately try to mess with them? No, no, I've got too much on my mind in that, that episode, you know. I, I look up, there's, there's not a lot of magic for me in that suit, um, it's, uh, like, you know, it's been for a long time, but I, I, like, it's been fun, like, this year I can, I've had the chance to see the response that um, people have had to the show, and so uh, that's what keeps me going when I'm uh, really, I'm literally losing my brain with the heat and the uh, exhaustion in that dog suit. It, it, uh, and, and I wonder why, I'm, what I'm doing with my life. And then I, I remember like the response, the, the love that people have for the character. And so um, I just, I just concentrate on that, and um, and I just sort of forget that that I even um, am in and playing Wilfred. It's funny. Um, I don't, this is a bit off the subject, but when whenever we start shooting Wilfred. In that those first few scenes, um, Wilfred's rarely there. Like, well, it'll be like I'm in the suit, I'm talking like Wilfred in the voice. I'm, I think I'm trying to act like Wilfred, but it's just it's not there, and it's really scary. I'm like, well, man, man look, like, is he going to come back? Like, have I? Is he gone? And then all of a sudden, like on about the third take, something just happens. It's sort of magic. Wilfred appears, and everyone sees it. You know, um, David. I think you said it last time. You're like, oh, there he is. You know, he's back. It's just one of those weird things that I'm nervous about. Nervous out. Yeah. And um, has dogs and technology not improved since you started doing it in Australia? <laughs> <laughs> no, it hasn't. It's like fireworks. You notice fireworks hasn't improved. <laughs> fireworks is fireworks. It's always going to be fireworks. Oh wow! Blue. <laughs> well, now they've got smiling faces. <laughs> It, it can't be overstated how uncomfortable that suit is. I, I tried to wear one of the ones that FX sold, which is, are much softer and more comfortable. Yeah. Yes. I couldn't stay in it for 10 minutes. Yeah, some of, like, that one right there. Yeah. Jason's, Jason's suit is like made of sandpaper, really thick, woolly sandpaper. And, and the fact that he can stay in it even for one take, let alone multiple takes, or an entire day of dancing, uh, is really uh, a testament to his. That suit too, the one in the, in the dance sequence, is actually a, a hotter suit because it's 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 like coiffed, so it has more hair, and it's kind of those are the worst conditions. You really did this. You really did this to me. It does. It is. It is. <laughs> and he danced endlessly that night with no complaint. It was pretty amazing, man. I was impressed. <laughs> At all, but David, has got a joke. So yeah, Jason shot the whole season and he didn't complain once. Not once. <laughs> <laughs> I complain a fair bit. It's not about the suit. <laughs> Um, David, I want to ask a little bit yes, about Ryan's good. new workplace. You have him actually out there in the adult world. He's interacting with Alison Mack and Stephen Weber and Rob Riggle and all of them. Does it make, A, why did you do that? And B, does it make it any more difficult to sort of use Wilfred in an environment where Ryan has adult responsibilities and is with other people more often? Um, one of the reasons we did it was there was um, some question as to how Ryan can afford such a nice house in Venice and drive a Beamer and he hadn't worked for a while. And, he was a successful lawyer, but I guess his, his savings could only go so far, so it seemed logical that we'd have to get him out in the work, work world. And one of the environments that we thought would be fun for Wilfred was to put him in an office, make him an office dog. It, it's not as fertile a territory as we thought it would be. Um, I, the, you know, I don't think I'm spoiling anything by saying that Ryan's job doesn't last all season. And, <laughs> And it doesn't end well. Um, but but it was uh, it was great to actually have what was fun for me and I think for for the writers was to write an ensemble workplace comedy um, after doing you know essentially a, you know a buddy comedy 
for, for a season. Um, so that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure the people here have questions. If you guys want to line up, I'll ask one more, and then we can get started on that. Um, are there multiple bears, or is there just the one? <laughs> Two? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, because we we had a... Oh, I think I'm spoiling anything by saying we tear bear's arm off that episode. Uh, <laughs> yes, you would be if you said that out loud. Um, no, uh, <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good thing you didn't say that out loud. It's not good. Um, yeah, look, things happen to bear along the way, and it's good to have a backup bear just to... Um, <laughs> It's kind of like it's just what they do on people, you know, stem cell research, and you can just replace an arm, <laughs> keep another up, a human alive. One day that we'll be doing that with us, We're experimenting with bear. <laughs> it's like Fiona says, funny stuff just comes out. <laughs> I think bear is actually my favorite character in the show. <laughs> And you, so but you don't need like a specialized bear, one for when he's typing, one for when he's driving, one for when he's being molested. That's what we're doing. Bear does a lot. We've, we've, um, but you know, like we've, we've been aware though, um, not to overuse bear. You know, like we have to sort of, we want to use him sparingly because we don't want people to get um, sick of him. So, her or her, or her. We never, if you notice, we never refer to Bear as a he or a she. It's always as Bear. So. I, I've been told that apparently we did in the first season. We did. We actually yeah, we, said, we said that it was a he. <laughs> yeah, only the guy. Somebody was just recently, somebody just recently <laughs> mentioned this to me, and I was like, no, it's an it. <laughs> we said that. No. All right. Think about it. We ruined it. We ruined it. Never, never. Oh, sure. Bear is always, always shows up on time. Never leaves set. <laughs> never leaves set. Um, always on his mark, you can know where to find him. And um, shows up every day on, on time, never complains. He actually was pretty pissed off you cut him out of that dance scene, Randall. <laughs> He's easy to write for you. <laughs> Alright, do we have questions from the audience? Hi, this question is for Elijah. How was it going from Lord of the Rings to doing a project like this? <laughs> Be amazing. I actually do look forward to this. I'll be like 50 years old, and they're gonna be like, and it'll be in some other movie, some other project, and they're gonna say, What was it like going from Lord of the Rings to this? <laughs> well, that was 30 years ago. Um, but we can talk about that transition. <laughs> I just, I love that. I think it's so funny. I've worked on so many things. It doesn't bother me. Um, this has been this has been an absolute joy to be a part of. Um, I, I love this project the moment that I read it. I've never read anything like it in my life. I've certainly never seen anything like it on television. And the idea of doing something that is not easy to describe, that is quite dark and cerebral and very funny, was really exciting. And and you know. Meeting David, getting a sense of where he wanted to take that first season, I fell in love with it, and um, and ultimately fell in love with with Jason and Randall and the whole team. And I, you know, I'm I'm so lucky to go to work today, uh, to go to work on on the show every day. We have so much fun. Um, I can't believe the scenarios that we get to create and get ourselves into. And, and you know, working with FX has been a joy as well because we get the freedom to make the show that we want to make. It's awesome. And, and with, the, with the Comic Con joke in this episode, was there any temptation to actually make it Frodo, or would that have been too on the nose? The, uh, the alt for that joke was, uh, I, I think I could go as Spider Man. Um, yeah, because the joke, right, is that I get uh, the joke is that people confuse me for Daniel Radcliffe and Tobey Maguire. <laughs> so that's the joke. <laughs> One of my favorite things about this show is the ambiguous nature of Wilfred. I think it's very much like Calvin and Hobbes, where's the question of, is it real or just imaginary? I was wondering what your personal take on the reality of the show is. told from Ryan's point of view, and the whole idea of the show is Ryan is trying to figure out what Wilfred is, and 
we want the audience to be in, in Ryan's um, shoes, trying to think, you know, reason through it the same way. Um, a, a lot of people are asking me, like, what are the answers? What, you know, solve the mystery? And I'm wondering, like, really? Do you really want to know? Because then why would we, why would you want to watch it? Um, you know, I think if, uh, probably need to do an episode about this where Wilfred teaches Ryan that, that it's the journey. Well, it's the journey, not the destination. You know what? Enjoy the ride. There, you know, if you think about if you think about all those shows that have mythologies like X Files and Lost and um, Battlestar Galactica, there's a 50% chance that when everything is explained to you, you're going to think it's terrible and you're going to hate it. And there's a 50% chance you're going to think, oh, how delightful, I'm, you know, that was totally worth it. So just kind of know right now, you know, 50% of you are going to hate where we're going. But you're going to really, you might really like the ride up till that last 15 minutes, like in Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> Interacting with Jason, doing scenes and everything, just what scenes are your favorite? Uh, well, uh, well, those are two questions. Um, <laughs> uh, um, my favorite part of interacting, uh, of, of acting with Jason, um, <laughs> we have it's a lot of favorites. I'd say that the songs that we come up with when we work, if people, if, if we had a, like a webcam on us while we work, it would be very entertaining for y'all and real embarrassing for us because we just we just we just sing songs all day i mean and we literally have made up songs to the point where we made up songs last season that we remembered this season so there might be a wilfred and um and ryan record coming out soon but um we have we have a blast you know it's funny the first season Probably because it was it was our first season and we were you know trying to establish uh, our work environment and, and our characters. I didn't really laugh a lot the first season. I, I didn't break a lot. This season I laughed my ass off. Yeah, last last season he broke for the first time in on the very last day, <laughs> and this season he broke on the first day. Yeah. <laughs> and we laughed a lot. Oh yeah. You have a lot of fun. When they're up against the wall right before. You're gonna sneak it, Wilfred, into the office. You must have done like 25 takes of that scene because Elijah just could not keep a straight face. I've never seen him do that before. It was totally unprofessional. And the jizz. It's very unprofessional. The jizz scene where um, I was lying underneath and uh, Elijah was above me and, and Randall did the, the jizz. Oh, yeah, that's Randall's. With, with, with a hypodermic needle yeah, full yeah, yeah. of stuff. Yeah. And every and, and they had a camera on me, but they, there's no point because every time I laugh, I, I could not stop laughing. And uh, I said, if, that, if we shot, we had shot that scene a hundred times, I'll laugh a hundred times. Randall's a Randall's a really hands-on director. He really likes to get in there. Um, he really likes to get in there, you know. Uh, and and he, he he really he, he was the first one to offer up his services for because uh, they were talking about how are we gonna make this happen? How, how who's gonna who's gonna shoot the jizz and how's it gonna go? And what kind of material are we work with? He's like, I'll do it. And it was masterful work. It was you, it was bang on every time. Bang on every time. There's one it got in my mouth. We're done. We're done here. <laughs> Next question. Hi guys. Uh, big fan. Sorry I missed your autograph session. Uh, this, question, this question is for Jason. What to you, for you, to you really separates this series from the Australian series? Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, in the, in the Australian uh, series of Wilfred, Wilfred was a lot more kind of, had less dimension to him. He was, he was very, um, very dark. And even though the, uh, the new Wilfred has elements of that, um, he's a lot more fun. Um, he, 
He plays characters within characters, you know, like when he's the diabolical scientist poisoning uh, Ryan with chocolate or being obsessed, we are possessed by the, the, the spirit of his uh, former dead, dead dog sneakers. And, and things like that are so much more fun for me to, um, to, to play, you know, I forget that I actually did go to acting school 20 years ago and I've got all these kind of different fun characters that I can I can play within the character. And uh, and also that whole protective um, side of, that Ryan, the Wolfram has for, for Ryan, which is, to, you know, I must say, informed by Elijah's uh, portrayal of Ryan and what he as a, as, a, as a person brings to that character that brings out this kind of um, uh, protective um, element you know, I tend to think of the, the Australian version of Wilfred as being kind of like um, the high school version. You know, he's, and now he's kind of, it's, it was in preparation for this. I mean, we did 16 episodes in total in Australia and we've, now we've done 26 so far with, with, with the American show. So it really feels like this is the show that, um, that, that we were, I was always going to make. Hello. Um, my question is for all of y'all, and I was going to say, if you had your own Wilfred, what animal would it be, and do you have a name for it? <laughs> I did. Scratchy. What was it? <laughs> I don't know how to follow that up. We all know Scratchy. Wonderful dog. Um, the dog I currently own, Barkley. I would say my big 18 pound cat dragon. <laughs> uh, my brother's dog, Henry, has kind of got a Wilfred vibe. <laughs> no, I would never have one. <laughs> Uh, my, my dog, George, is, that's the picture of the golden retriever at the end of every episode, was uh, he sat next to me uh, every minute while I was writing the pilot, and uh, right after the pilot got picked up, he, uh, he died suddenly, but, uh, uh, but he got some great lines in the pilot, and uh, this picture uh, lives on. We've got about five more minutes. Next question. Oh, hi there. I wanted to say I really enjoyed seeing Robin Williams make a cameo. Um, would you ever consider having Bruce Willis as a bunny rabbit? <laughs> hey, someone with a North reference. Nice word. God, that would be wild. That would be awesome. <laughs> Apparently, Jason hasn't seen North. <laughs> oh. Saying the good side. He shows up as like a as a guide at one point, and he, he's in a bunny outfit. Pink bunny outfit. <laughs> for the record, if Bruce Willis wants to do the show, we'll we'll, yeah, we'll find part of the show. All right, next. Um, hi, Elijah. This Hello. is for you. Um, this one goes out to you. <laughs> see other animals like on the street or like your brother's dog and just can't get Wilfred out of your head and what maybe that animal's thinking. Uh, yeah, I, that's, I think that's why I mentioned Henry. <laughs> Henry kind of has that vibe. He, look, he, re, he looks like Wilfred and he's complicated psychologically. <laughs> He actually is. He's a very strange dog. Um, he's very affectionate and warm. He's a he's a medium to large sized dog, and he'll he'll sit in your lap, um, fully cuddle with you. But he does this really weird thing where he'll 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 jump onto the couch and he'll lie across me, and and it's cuddle times, right? Like totally comfortable while watching TV. But if I move, <coughs> he growls, and it's like, no, man, you you're the one who wanted to get up here. What's the deal? I move and you're growling at me? What am I doing wrong? So it's, 
there's a there's a constant push and a pull, which really reminds me of, of Wilfred, and um, I can never quite understand what's going on in his mind. It's great, and I do analyze him. I do look at him and be like, "What is up with you, man? What is up?" He starts to smell too. It's partially because I don't groom him enough. <laughs> Elijah, um, I was wondering, uh, do you bring the humor of Wilford with you into other projects, like, for example, uh, Project Freelancer for Rooster Team? <laughs> well, I mean, the, the, the comedy of Wilfred, I think, exists in Wilfred. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I, if I necessarily bring that into anything else, but, I mean, in terms of uh, sort of learning um, I think I learned a lot from Jason, and I learned a lot. I mean, I've learned a lot doing this show. It's comedy is not something that I was adept at or, or had much experience doing. Um, so I mean, you know, in in further expressing that for potentially other comedic projects, um, I, I'm sure I would take my experiences here, you know, most certainly. All right, next. Hi, um, Katie Lexing from Twitter. Thank you for the video shout out. <laughs> And I wanted to ask, if, Elijah, is there anything in the script that you saw that you thought, there's no way I'm doing this, this is too much? <laughs> no, I, I think, um, no. <laughs> well, I don't think so. I don't think there was any, I'm trying to think now. There were definitely a few, a few episodes that I read. There were a few things that, well, the gist. I, yeah. <laughs> That's it. When I first read that, I was like, oh, really? Okay. <laughs> But I, but I love it. It's hilarious. So no, there was. An, I'm, I'm pretty much up for anything. I think. I think all of us are at this, at this point. We, we know what we're doing. We know what show I'm working on. In, in the writers' room, we try to think what what's the situation we could put um, Ryan in to make him as uncomfortable as possible. Like, like when he's hugging the creepy guy in, in the. Uh, you know, at the beach, about the steroids. Oh my God! I just, I, I just couldn't wait to see sweet little Elijah being wrapped around this creepy dude, just holding him close and pulling him in. We, uh, there's plenty more moments for that to come. All right, I think we have time for one last question. Hi, um, my question's for Elijah as well. I'm sorry to be attacking you with questions. Um, I was just wondering if you've ever had any ideas um, or things that you've seen with animals that you've offered up for uh, the show. Talk, I mean, we all talk creatively all the time. Um, but I don't know if there are any ideas that I came up with. Silence. <laughs> Lots of good stuff, though. Say the best to last. <laughs> I will say this about last season. That <laughs> a, a one pitch that uh, in the pilot, probably the best joke in the pilot came from Elijah, and that was uh, when they opened the closet and there was all that pot in there, and, and Wilfred said, we're going to need a bigger barn. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was Elijah's pitch. <laughs> That is by far the best joke in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the cast of the group of Thank you. Thank you, guys. David, I, I have to ask, how did this episode come about? What was the original pitch? <laughs> Is this thing on? Uh, that was the first one experience. Is this on? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, actually, there, there was an interesting story about this where um, somebody in our writer's room, who's probably in this room right now, but who remained nameless, was talking about how he had gone to a party one night, and as a gag, he, uh, just as a gag, he had picked up the dog uh, that was there and, and was pretending to jerk it off. And, not pretending, sorry. He was actually doing it. And, um, and uh, although I don't think he actually took the dog to completion, for the rest of the night, 
the dog was following her around completely upset. <laughs> and, um, and that was sort of where we started on this episode. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, the dog apparently still remembers him. Like he sees him and he's like, yeah, you, you know. <laughs> but but in fact, to, to defend um, Reed, he, he didn't... Uh, do at the end, it wasn't on the lipstick part, it was like just a shark. <laughs> if, you know, if you ever meet Reed, he's, uh, he's the funniest guy I've ever met. Um, you know, between him and his writing partner, um, Eli. Hilarious, hilarious guy. Are you here, Reed? Reed? Anything. You stand up. Anything. <laughs> this guy, could this guy. Could the dog masturbator please stand up? <laughs> He'll do anything for a laugh. <laughs> including Master Made a Dog. <laughs> so how do you get from there then to Ryan and Wilford dancing? Well, I, I think um, there were, the idea of doing an, an episode about doggy dancing was sort of floating around also. This was a story that we had actually broken last year with a completely different theme. Um, it was about Wilford and Ryan spending too much time together, and that, that episode eventually became the one about the block party with Trash Face um, last season. So it, it changed a little bit. But um, it was one of the episodes at FX, not for the reason you would think, had thought that we weren't quite ready to do. Um, so they asked us not to do it last year. Um, it had nothing to do with the, the, the money shot, which by the way, you will not see on the air. That is, that is the one thing that we were not allowed to do. So you, you got to see a shot, but uh, only people on DVD, so you should feel very, very special. It will be a it will be a dry shot on, on when it airs. Um. To you, our extremely talented panel, our producers and stars. First, executive producer and director Randall Einhorn. She plays Kristen Dorian Brown. She plays Ryan's neighbor and Wilfred's owner. Jenna, please welcome Fiona Goodman. He co-created the original version of Wilfred. He's an executive producer, a writer, and stars as the title character, ladies and gentlemen, Jason Gann. He stars as Ryan. Please welcome Elijah Wood. executive producer who has worked on such great shows as American Dad, Family Guy. He adapted Wilfred for American Television. It's my pleasure to introduce David Zuckerman. Yeah. We're very fortunate to have an outstanding moderator today. He is the former TV critic of the New York Star Ledger. He's the senior editor and TV crit critic for Hit Fix. You can follow him on Twitter, at Seppenwall. Please welcome Alan Seppenwall. So, Elijah, I have to start with you. you, you, you yeah, you, you get the script, do you think, all right, now everything I ever wanted to accomplish as an actor is done? <laughs> In one fell swoop, yeah, and one fell swoop. <laughs> we, we all just watched the episode for the first time I did anyway. I've never seen that episode. And um, I think that's our crowning achievement. <laughs> I mean, it's got everything you want in a great comedy show, right? It's got jizz, it's got great dancing. Come on. Oh my god. Where, where do you rank? And it's got a churro blowjob. Come on! you on our show. Where do you rank the accomplishments? You know, starring in an Oscar-winning best picture or being in a money shot? I mean... <laughs> yeah, totally. Oh. Um, <laughs> finale type thing and it was like, this may be the last time we ever play these uh, roles, you know? Like, you, you live from week to week with ratings and stuff and it was a really, um, it was a special, a special time and it was like, wow, this is, um, this has been a fun journey. It was cool. It was cool to actually go out 
of the whole season with that scene. It's such an explosive celebratory. You know that? Dirty minds. Uh, but it, it, it's such a, you know, it's a celebratory sequence, and to kind of go out dancing um, was awesome. And it was a real great thing for the crew to experience, too, because it was literally our most, like, professional day on set. We had a technocrane. Like, we felt like we were making something proper, with proper equipment. It was, it was pretty amazing. And then we had Del Taco that night, too. <laughs> I know. Del Taco? That was, that was not our finest moment. That was a dream. <laughs> I, I want to ask Dorian and Fiona a, a sequel to a question I asked at last year's panel in terms of, of working with Jason and not reacting to him as a person and, and treating him as a dog. Now that you've done two seasons of this, do you feel like you've gotten it down or there's still times every now and then when you find yourself kind of breaking and reacting to what he's actually doing? You know, Jason is one of the funniest people I know and you never know what's going to come out of his mouth. So um, definitely there will be times when we'll be interacting where that will crack me up. But in terms of like being in the moment, it's still the same approach, just trying to keep it as truthful as possible and treat him like he's my one of my own pets. <laughs> Um, I actually did have uh, a couple scenes. Like, there, there we had, I had a scene. Tonight's episode, we get to interact, and that was fun. But I did have a hard time uh, not noticing Jason and not looking at him like a human being because I guess we realized we had never really done that. We hadn't done much together until no. this year, and we realized oh, this is like um, this is un unusual. And um, yeah, it's good. I, I think that. Um, I think that Wilfred and the Kristen character, um, we were talking about this before, should, should interact more. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her, she's gorgeous. <laughs> and, Jason, Married with a kid. Yes. and Jason, do you ever feel like Mr. Bisson deliberately tried to mess with them? No, no, I've got too much on my mind in that, that episode, you know. I, I look up. There's there's not a lot of magic for me in that suit. Um, it's, uh, but uh, we, we just came up with the the notion of the theme and the idea of uh, Ryan and Wilfred doing um, a big dance number at the end, and the and the story you know came together. And Jason did an amazing job on the script, and and uh, they worked. These guys worked so hard on that dance. They they did that in between shooting scenes from other episodes. They worked with a choreographer. Um, they, they just busted their asses, and I have to say, and you can't tell by looking at it, or maybe you can't, they're not actually natural dancers. <laughs> they had to work a little bit. Um, but uh, they, they worked really hard on that, and, and the, the music uh, came together. It was, it was a really fun thing to do. And, and Randall, I mean, it looks, the, the final number looks very much like a classic movie musical kind of thing. How did you shoot that? Um, you know, we actually used... Um, we, we shot, it's funny, I have one frame that I sent to one of the production people at FX. Uh, it's a shot, we shoot our, our, our show on stills cameras. Kind of like uh, these stills cameras down here, only not quite as high end. So we have, um, it's a photo I had of, of, of our stills cameras, a $3,000 stills camera with a, a lens I bought off of eBay for $500 on a $300,000, you know, crane to do those big sweeping shots. It's just, there's some great irony in that, I thought. It's just this tiny little camera on a giant crane. But um, <laughs> we worked together with a production designer, Michael Whetstone, to come up with how to move the walls and blow that whole place apart. And I think it looked really cool. A lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. now, uh, Elijah and Jason, I just want to hear a little bit from your perspective about doing the choreography for this. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, how was that? It, it, well, it was challenging. We, we didn't have a lot of time. Um, uh, like David was saying, you know, we were shooting different episodes, sometimes in the same day, um, and to try and find the time, you know, that, that was a, what was it, like a three and a half minute dance sequence that we had to learn? And it, I remember the first time that we actually saw these, the dancers, our, our choreographers, lay it all out for us. It was so intimidating. Because <laughs> we, up at that point, we'd, we'd learn little bits and pieces for that dance montage that you see in the middle, and that was easier, because we could kind of bite off these little chunks. But this whole long sequence was very intimidating, but we kind of just attacked it bit by bit. And it was the last thing that we shot um, in the whole season, and we were there till about 1 in the morning or 1.30 in the morning, and, uh, and it was kind of surreal because it was um, 
the lights were on and it looks like this Hollywood, you know, 1940s Hollywood set and um, the music, it was like a real fun. <laughs> it's been here for a long time, but I, I, like, it's been fun. Like, this year I can, I've had the chance to see the response that um, people have had to the show. And so uh, that's what keeps me going when I'm I really am literally losing my brain with the heat and the uh, exhaustion in that dog suit. It, it, uh, and, I, and I wonder why I'm, what I'm doing with my life. And then I, I remember like the response, to the love that people have for the character. And so um, I just I just concentrate on that and um, and I just sort of forget that that I even um, am in and playing Wolf Reader. It's funny. Um, I don't, this is a bit off the subject, but when whenever we start shooting Wolf Reader, in that those first few scenes, um, Wilfred's rarely there. Like, well, it'll be like I'm in the suit, I'm talking like Wilfred in the voice. I'm, I think I'm trying to act like Wilfred, but it's just it's not there, and it's really scary. I'm like, well, man, man look like is he going to come back? Like, have I, is he gone? And then all of a sudden, like on about the third take, something just happens. It's sort of magic. Wilfred appears, and everyone sees it. You know, um, David, I think you said it last time. You're like, oh, there he is. You know, he's back. It's just one of those weird things that I see nervous about. Yeah. And um, has dog suit technology not improved since you started doing it in Australia? <laughs> no, it hasn't. It's like fireworks. You notice fireworks hasn't improved? <laughs> fireworks is fireworks. And it's always going to be fireworks. Oh, wow. Blue. <laughs> well, now they've got smiley faces. <laughs> It, it can't be overstated how uncomfortable that suit is. I, I tried to wear one of the ones that FX sold, which is, are much softer and more comfortable. Yes. I couldn't stay in it for 10 minutes. Yeah, some of the, that, that one right there. Jason's, Jason's suit is like made of sandpaper, really thick, woolly sandpaper. And, and the fact that he can stay in it even for one take, let alone multiple takes, or an entire day of dancing, uh, is really uh, a testament to his. That uh, suit too, the one in the, in the dance sequence, is actually a, a hotter suit because it's 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 like coiffed, so it has more hair, and it's kind of those are the worst conditions. You really did You really did it. Really it does. It, it is. <laughs> and he danced endlessly that night with no complaint. It was pretty amazing, man. I was impressed. <laughs> complains at all, but... Dave, you know, Dave has got a joke, so yeah, Jason shot the whole season and he didn't complain once. Not once. <laughs> <laughs>